Yo, what is up everyone? Steven with Bama Saltwater. I just wanted to show you that gorgeous pre-sunrise sky here on the Alabama Gulf Coast. Absolutely awesome. About 12 miles south of Orange Beach, Alabama, I'm gonna do some fishing. So as y'all saw the title and the thumbnail. But first thing I wanna do is troll some structure. There's a weather buoy here I always like to stop at. Have our Apollo X wrap with some 44 pound single strand wire on there. Gonna throw it behind the boat, do some trolling while it's still early in the morning, and then go try to find our dinner with some squid. Y'all stick around, see what we catch. I'm glad that you can join me today, and let's have a good time. Let's get our little X wrap out there. I just like to make one long cast, and then put the boat in gear and let out probably another 20 feet or so of line, and now that's ready to go. This is a 6,000 size reel with 40 pound braid and a seven foot heavy power fast action spinning rod. This video is brought to you by J&H Tackle. Uh, they'll be linked down below if you wanna get anything you see in this video. Rods, reels, tackle, they have everything. Y'all go check them out down below and I appreciate J&H for sponsoring this video. So let's get into trolling y'all. God's artwork early in the morning. Look at that. So I wake up in the morning. Come out here just to witness that. Catching fish is an added bonus. <laughs> that didn't take long at all. I mean, at all. <clears throat> like, literally 30 seconds into trolling, and we're hooked up. That's cool. That's why I like doing this. It's always fun to do that on the way to your next fishing spot. Let's see what we have here. If you have someone else with you, you wanna keep the boat in gear. I mean, it's going forward. I don't, so I stop the boat. That's gonna be a little toony, I can tell you that already. Yep, little toony, AKA Bonita. There we go. Let's see if I can hurry up and get this hook out of them. They don't like to stop swimming. Tuna and mackerel die pretty quickly. Little Toonie, Benito, let's put him back in the water. There you go, he's gone, sped off quick. Those are actually false albacore. They're different than the Benito that you catch or the skipjack tuna that you catch on the Atlantic side and deeper out in the Gulf of Mexico. Edible, not that great to be honest, but everyone's opinions are different. Let's get that extract back out, that was cool. And it's actually 90 feet of water over here. 87, 90 feet. Not too deep, really good depth of fishing. Just got hammered. Come on. Ugh. There we go. Don't be afraid to let them run and wear themselves out. Uh, I don't know what I have. There we go. It's a beast, whatever it is. Come on, it's shooting the boat. Whoa, it's swimming fast towards me. Mm. Come here. <laughs> Little Bobo, yep, there we go. Another Bonita. Oh my gosh, what was that? Good gracious, what just came up and ate it? I think a big amberjack. Wow, that was interesting to say the least. So I had a bonita on there, a little toony, and something big came up and just ate it. And now I'm hooked into that. Huge. There it is down there. What are you? Yep, big old amberjack ate my bonita. Man, we are like a week before the season opens too. There he is. That's a stud. Lay it down carefully because I can't keep you. Ain't nothing like fighting one of these reef donkeys first thing in the morning. Unfortunately, I'm a week before I can keep them. That would be an awesome keeper. So I have to let this one go. Go and jet him down. And she gone. That was a stud fish. 
a little bit out of breath on that one. <laughs> I'm gonna move to my bottom spot, but I'll continue to troll on the way out there. Like I said, at the time of making this video, I cannot keep Amberjack. It's like a week, week and a half before the season opens. So eh, it is what it is. I'll come back out there and catch it. But a Bonita or a little Toonie hit this lure and the Amberjack came up and smoked them. Let's get it back out, y'all. Back out. I'm in just now. And I have a fish again. Mm. <laughs> this is cool. Like I was sitting there cleaning the water off my camera lens and just hooked up again. That didn't take long at all. <sighs> mm. Let's get it closer to the boat. All before, it's only 6.47 in the morning. Oh, that's a nice king. Yeah, it is. Okay, we'll be able to put him in the fish box. There you are. Perfect schoolie size king there. <clears throat> uh oh like when I touch the gaff they can sense that energy that they're about to come aboard the Bama Saltwater Express here and they take off yes buddy <laughs> you ain't that happy Guess you can't blame them. It's doing that circle. Kings and tuna do that death circle. Come on. All right, we're gonna have smoked fish dip. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Yep. We're gonna have smoked fish dip, y'all. Ha <laughs> ha. That's what I'm talking about. Woo! Oh, he's got a fish inside of him. Empty. Oh, that's so cool. Y'all, king mackerel, check that out. You see me catch these things a lot. You're allowed three per person in the state of Alabama. Only 24 inches length is their minimum. This one's a perfect size for smoked fish dip. But y'all, this little dude spit out a flying fish. Let me bleed him out and throw him on ice and I'm gonna show you that flying fish real quick. So just how I mentioned, I just went over a bunch of flying fish. This is what he was eating. These are flying fish, really cool things. They literally fly on top of the water. I mean, they will go for like almost a hundred feet. This one's a little bit smaller one. Everything eats them out here. King mackerel, mahi mahi, wahoo, tuna. But normally he would have wings there see all he's kind of been digested a little bit but that's what they're eating really neat this little thing has put in some work for me this year i use these x traps all the time and all i do is change out the hooks and i've changed them out to some four extra strong treble hooks and we've already caught a crap ton of fish this morning you don't have to have crazy gear to come out here and catch fish if you have a boat or kayak like you don't have to have van stalls you don't have to have g loomis rods come out here with a 6,000 size reel loaded up with some braid wire leader and an x wrap and you can catch almost anything that swims out here so i just came to 110 feet of water and i have some of this california squid thawing out really pretty white squid check that out i'll show you how i like to prep it you can drop one hole but we're going to be fishing with some smaller tackle so I like to cut the tentacles off. I love that part of the squid. And then what I do is go down without cutting the other side. I wanna open this squid up just like that and get out all those guts, throw it over his chum. There's their quill, see that? Pretty cool. It's like the squid's backbone. It's not a bone, they don't have bones. Looks like a plastic straw, really cool. Now I have a piece of squid laid out flat just like that now i'm gonna make strips about one inch wide and there's some squid strips and i'll go even further and cut these strips in half again it's as simple as that now it's time to bait these squid strips up on our 
double drop rig. At the very bottom, I have a two ounce bank sinker coming to a loop. Come about a foot and a half up, have a dropper loop with a one alt circle hook. Come another foot and a half up, have the same thing. Dropper loop, one alt circle. Come another foot up, I have a black barrel swivel tied straight to my braid. So I'll take the small circle hook, this piece of squid strip I just cut, and I like to hook it twice. And we're ready to drop down this squid and catch us some dinner, y'all. Let's go. All the way down. Alrighty. First fish on the squid this morning. Let's see if it's something we can keep. Fun part about this is you really never know what you're gonna pull up. There's so many different things on these reefs out here. All man-made reefs. Well, let's see what you are, what kind of fish you are. All right, yes. Got our first keeper and we have a tom tate as well. But that is our mangrove snapper. They only have to be 12 inches. That's a perfect about average size there. Otherwise known as gray snapper mangrove. That's what you'll hear me call them. It's a great eating fish. So he's gonna go in our cooler, but you see they come from 100 foot down and their stomachs are blown out because of the depressurization of them coming up top. So there's a lot of pressure down at 100 feet. But that's a nice fish. Now I did double up. This is a ruby red lips or tom tate. You can see why they're called ruby red lips. See how red their inside of their mouth is. These are good bait, good live baits. He's gonna go back. Amberjack aren't open, otherwise I'd drop him down on a free line and try to get a big jack. But there we go, y'all. Great addition to the cooler. So I'm gonna put some more squid on. This time I'm gonna use the tentacles. Check that out. Let's go right through and it's good to go. Do the same thing on the other hook and we'll drop it down. A little bit harder fighter. Let's see if it's something that can go in the cooler, y'all. I don't know. Nope. Oh yeah. Sorry, I thought that was a red snapper. There we go. That's a target species. That is a bee liner, aka vermilion snapper. They only have to be 10 inches long. Very, very good eating. You're allowed 10 a person. He's gonna go in the cooler. That is what I'm after today. Y'all, so I do wanna mention real quick, you see me use my trolling motor an awfully lot. This is one of my favorite accessories I have on my boat. This is a 36 volt trolling motor. Now, when we're in strong current like this and I wanna fish all day, I wanna make sure I have a battery that will hold up to what I need my boat to do. So I wanna show y'all real quick. I'm running a single 36 volt Dakota lithium battery. Look at that. Doesn't take up any space at all. Super lightweight, 11 year warranty. But my favorite thing is how light it is and how little space it takes. Now you can also run three 12 volt batteries in sequence to get your 36 volt, but I love that single 36. And that's by Dakota Lithium. They are partnered with the channels. I'm also running one as my house and starter battery as well, a 12 volt. It'll be linked down below. You can go click on that link and search Dakota. They're awesome. They got a bunch of power boxes that I use as well to charge my GoPros and my computer on the go. But y'all just wanted to share with you what I use to keep my trolling motor going so I can catch these awesome fish. So let's go ahead and get baited up again and get back into fishing. Come on, be a big bee liner. <laughs> see hope it's something else that can go in the cooler find out oh cool it is it's actually a lane snapper these are really neat very very good eating incredible table fare see that that is a lane snapper they only have to be eight inches here in alabama it's one of the finest eating fish that comes off this reef, in my opinion. And they're beautiful colors too. See the yellow going through that little dot? That is awesome. We're gonna keep this one. The limits on these pretty much add up to your 20 reef fish aggregate. Heck yeah, y'all. So it's only 8.30 and I already have a pretty nice cooler full. I've rebaited up with some more of those squid tentacles and dropped down again. Yeah, that's a little bit better one what you get for nibbling on my squid you mm. got a hook in you Woo. 
Got some head shakes. Mm. Come on, Neil. Let's get you close to the poop. Oh, man. It's a trigger fish. Cool fish, to say the least. Just out of season right now at the time of making this video. But add that to the variety of fish we're catching today. It's pretty neat things. There you go, ma'am. And he just shot down to the bottom again. Those things are really good eating and pretty cool too. You never want to stick your finger in their mouth. Since there are a lot of barracudas hanging around, I've tied on one of these CUDA tubes. It's just this rubber kind of like sunglass tubing and a couple treble hooks. I need to get off the treble hook covers. Don't forget to do that. You can buy them pre-made like I did or you can make them yourself. There's a couple egg weights in there for casting distance and you control these or cast these like we're gonna do and see if we can put that to the test. Here we go. Let's throw this sucker out there. This will be fun. Something hits it. I'm gonna throw it a little bit in just see what it looks like. Oh yeah, <laughs> that thing swims awesome. So just cast it out, reel it back to you as fast as you can keeping it below the surface. See if one of these barracuda wanna come up and eat. That's a big one. That one's about probably 15, 20 pounds. There was another one down there that was just insane. Oh, come on, fire up on it. <laughs> At least I got one to follow. Oh, whoa! Wow! <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, dude, that was so cool! Whoa! Did y'all see that? It just cut me off because it got me in the trolling motor, but that was freaking awesome! Dude, that was so cool! Wow! I don't have another one on deck. I guess I left them at the house. I only brought one. That was awesome. Really, really neat. I do have some of those frozen cigar minnows I might be able to get, but how cool was that? I mean, some live action right at the boat, y'all. There you go. <laughs> Get it up before the big cuda gets it. Oh, big barracuda chasing it. Dang it. Oh, and a big bull shark. Wow. <laughs> Look at them things. Oh my gosh. All right, well, might as well use that hardtail. I got bit in half by a shark or a cuda or both. Oh, that's a big barracuda. Come on. There's another one. There's like two of them. Oh, he's going to eat it. Okay, he just ate it. He just ate it. That was cool. Yeah, that was really cool. Mm. Ah, dang. <laughs> hook came out, circle hook came out. That was neat though. All right, back to the squid for a little bit. So I pick up some more fish for the cooler or a live bait. All right, hooked up. I hope I can get through all these barracudas mm. and sharks and everything else down there. Amberjack. Oh yeah, with the nice keeper mangrove again for the cooler. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. It's so hot, it's hard to breathe out here. <laughs> Woo. Mm. There's another good one. Come on up you. Oh no, don't don't get eaten. Don't get eaten. 
Don't get eaten, man. <laughs> it's another nice mangrove. Heck yeah, for the cooler again. That's three mangrove snapper right there. Total that I have in the cooler and that lane snapper in the king. That's a nice one, y'all. Another good one on the bottom. Come on up. Get away from the paracudas. <laughs> they're trying to chase it. Yeah. He's had some teeth marks on them, but they're slowly getting bigger. Found a nice group of mangrove snapper. It's another one for the cooler, y'all. Heck yeah. What the heck are they doing? I guess coming after my chum slick. <laughs> there's Jack Craval, Amberjack, Barracuda. Wow, there's so much life down there. Whoa, that barracuda down there is huge. I want to see if I can entice them with the whole squid. Down there. That was pretty cool seeing all the different species come right below the boat. Y'all, that is a rainbow runner. Excellent, excellent table fare. I don't catch them often, so that is really cool. I was able to bring that in the boat. Ah, throw his gills out, let them bleed out, and we're gonna bury him in some ice. That is so cool. Really neat looking fish. Cool colors on them. <laughs> Let's see if I can catch another rainbow runner. Small piece of squid, fluorocarbon leader, and circle hook. Just chumming them. Let's see if we can get them come back behind the boat. Mm. That has some weight to it. Mm. Definitely some weight to it. Mm. <laughs> oh. mm. The heck is this? Get out from that. There. Okay, thank goodness it didn't get in that trolling motor. GoPro's overheating. I'm overheating myself. I don't know what I have. I just want to get it up. Oh, is that a Jack Craval? Yeah, it's a Jack Craval. <laughs> That's why. Big old Jack Cravel. There you are. Look at you, ma'am. Look at you go. That's what it is. At least I got it up. Pretty cool thing. Woo. Calm down, you. You decided to eat my squid. Is that what you decided to do there you go and he gone i wasn't about to stick my hand in there with that big barracuda that one there that one that one that one that one that one <laughs> eight barracudas down there so it was just a big old jack craval pretty fun i can literally see the top of this shipwreck i'm going to drop this camera down my gopro just to see and hopefully it doesn't get eaten by a barracuda or a jack just to show y'all see a cooter right there. Hope it doesn't come eat this camera. Y'all, it is getting blistery hot out here flat calm conditions zero breeze it's beautiful don't get me wrong but man it is it is it hot and i'm pretty worn down i've had a good time catching some fish so there's still a giant school of cuda around here i mean i've counted about 30 of them all in this school sitting on top of this structure so i'm gonna do some trolling and then probably see you back at the house cooled off and getting ready to clean those fish hope you enjoyed this type of catching y'all and i'll see you on the trip back couldn't ask for any better conditions in terms of wave height, swell. Got 
about four miles to go. Y'all, I just got back to my house and we are gonna clean up this rainbow runner. These are in the Jack family. These are excellent eating fish, raw and cooked. Sashimi style or baked, grilled, however you like to cook it. I'm gonna do it both ways. I'm gonna fillet it and then have some sashimi for myself and then cook it for everybody else because they like to eat cooked fish and not necessarily like sushi but very cool fish. I don't catch these often. This is actually the first one I've had on my channel. So pretty cool. But y'all, sword fillet knife, seven inch flex. Link down below if you wanna pick you one up. That's what I use. And we're just gonna fillet this fish out. First thing I wanna do though, is get these scales off. Cause I'm gonna leave the skin on. So they have a decent amount of scales. You can use a spoon, a descaler, I just use the back of a fillet knife. Real easy to do. Make sure you get all of them off and do the back side as well. They have a lot of scales. It's going to be the, probably the only time I use my water hose aside from cleaning up at the very end. And there's a specific reason for that. But let's spray it off before we open it up. So now that we have it descaled and sprayed off, just want to show you real quick, they have kind of rubbery lips. There's no teeth back there. It's all like sandpaper feel. So pretty neat. But I'm just going to fillet this fish out. And the reason I say that was the last time I was going to use the water hose on it, because when you're doing sashimi or really in general, but when you're doing sashimi or any type of raw fish, the less water you get on there, the less bacteria grows on that fillet and you can wash a lot of the natural fish oils away so get you a paper towel dry this sucker up now if this was just a regular red snapper i'd probably just fillet it wash it off but this is a special fish to me so we're gonna do it the right way now time to cut in it on nice Cut. So now we make an angled cut towards the head. Wow, what a nice fish. Check out the color of that meat. Super white. That is awesome. I'm going to go through pull on the dorsal and just a shallow cut. All I'm trying to do is open it up. There we go. And I'm just going to fillet right along the bony structure, pretty much like anything else. Once you go through and get to the middle, this is normally where I like to flip it over. Shallow cut. Throw that anal fin and go all the way down to the tail fin or the caudal fin is what it's called. And same thing, right on the bone. And then once you get that filleted off, cut it off the tail. I am leaving the skin on, kind of like you would a salmon. Now I like to go up and over this rib cage. Hear me cracking those pin bones. All right, down the rib cage, get that belly meat. There's an awesome filet of some rainbow runner. It's gonna be really awesome to eat. Cannot wait. Like I said, I left the skin on and I'm not gonna spray it off. When I get upstairs, I'll continue to pat it down with a paper towel and we'll continue to prep it, but see, didn't miss hardly any meat there. If you really want to get after it, you can take a spoon, scoop all that meat from in between the rib cages. See that? And scrape all that meat right off that spine. Or you can just use this whole thing to make some fish stock in the head too. But I'm going to do the same thing on the back side, y'all. So here we go again. 
go towards the collar, round around the pectoral fin and back towards the head. And you can actually pull the head and most of the guts out. If you wanted to, you could clean these guts out and then use that head for some fish stock. There's not that much meat on these. They're pretty bony, but this is going to go in our blue crab trap like all my other scraps. But check that out and see how clean this is. When you're doing this, you want to do your best to prevent piercing all these guts so you don't taint the meat. Just open it up <laughs> all the way to the tail. There we go. I kind of pull back with my thumb just to create some tension. Keep it tight. Come all the way back up again. Cut it off. So I like to go around the rib cage. those pin bones and just peel it back separating the ribs from that fillet there we go now like I said you could take a spoon and cut and pull all that off goes in our crab trap have two amazing fillets with the skin on fresh from the gulf of mexico that we're going to take upstairs and get ready to cook it for our dinner y'all so i'll see you up top in the kitchen y'all we are in the kitchen hopefully the dogs don't go all crazy barking while we're trying to film but i'm happy that y'all can join me today we're doing something real simple and two different techniques one we're doing sashimi because you absolutely have to if you don't like raw fish, don't worry, we're gonna cook it as well. So let's start out doing the sashimi. And there's Ono, as always. Bobo is doing whatever he wants to do. Ono has to be right below our feet. Are you gonna say hi again to everybody? Foot, foot, foot. Oh, good boy, okay. I can't touch because my hands are clean, but you're a good doggy. Back to the fishing. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the upper loin, just the first like eighth of this filet right here and this is going to be my sashimi so take us a nice loin and that belly meat and then this is going to go and get baked now i've cut me a perfect piece off you want to get rid of that red meat in there so i'm going to go down the middle along these pin bones and fillet it right off the skin oh yeah look at that piece that's gonna be delicious. Look at the colors in it too. And gonna do the same thing here. Lay it off, leave that red meat on the skin. See? Put that off. And now that's gonna be my raw portion there for sashimi. It's very simple. It allows you to taste every bit of that fish with some Kikkoman soy sauce packets. Keep them in soy sauce, you know it's good. And then some sushi wasabi. Cut it in as thin of the pieces as I can. And lay it on our plate. So we'll do this. You saw me do the same thing with the wahoo. Just thin pieces. You don't have to be perfect. And this is just for me. My mom doesn't eat raw fish, unless it's California rolls, which that doesn't really count as sushi to be honest. <laughs> it's imitation crab meat. And then my brother's at work, he likes sushi. So for now, this is just me. That's why I'm only doing a small portion. So now I have my plate of yellowtail sashimi. Super awesome. Great way of enjoying fish. So we're gonna enjoy this while our oven's heating on 375 it's preheating right now for our baked part let's enjoy some fresh sashimi take some of this wasabi a little bit of this stuff goes a long long way let's grab a piece of our rainbow runner 
dip it in just a little bit of that wasabi. I love soy sauce. So this is just regular soy sauce. Let's give it a try. Hmm. Can't get any fresher than that. There's a kick from that wasabi. That is phenomenal. I mean, that whole fish just melts in your mouth like you want. You don't want it to be too muscular, too grainy. This right here is perfect. I'm taking another bite because that was very good. It doesn't need a lot of stuff, but this one is just soy sauce wasabi. It is an acquired taste, so like I said, don't worry if you don't like raw fish. Mmm. We're going to cook the other one. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So once the oven is up at to 375 degrees, I'll show you the ingredients that I'm using for our fillets. So while our fish is cooking, I'm going to be munching on our sashimi. Let's get our ingredients prepped and ready so we can cook these fillets. Here, I have a mortar and pedestal. Going to smash up our fresh ingredients. This is very easy to do. It may seem complicated, but I have some freshly cut ginger, freshly chopped garlic, some minced garlic with a little bit of EVOO, extra virgin olive oil, into the bottom. All together. So that's your ginger and garlic mix. And now I have some chopped green chilies that my neighbor grew and gave me a few. So we're gonna put that in there as well. This is just gonna be a ginger garlic chili chutney mix. That's what I would call it. Some salt, just a pinch. And then I have two lemon halves. I'm gonna pull those seeds out of there. You don't wanna be chopping up any seeds. So. There's a half of the lemon juice. But now it's just time to mush this together. We want to make it into a nice, fine paste. See, it's going to go from chopped ingredients, should be a paste. Well, probably see in about five, 10, 30, 40 minutes here. <laughs> now, it don't take long. So we want to get some of this EVO ho down, olive oil. Just enough to where it doesn't stick. Put that. You can also spray it as well if you want. Take my Rainbow Runner fillet. And then the other side. Skin down just like a salmon. But it kind of looks like a salmon on that side. So now I have freshly cracked black pepper. And then some salt. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do is cover it in our EVOO. This allows it to brown and not burn. You can do butter as well. Now you don't want it to steam in there, you want it to bake. So don't oversaturate it in oil. Just enough to where it doesn't dry out and it'll brown it. So cover that up. Nice and easy. Boom, look at that. All we have next is to take our paste. If you don't have a mortar and pestle like this, you can just use a uh, mincer. So we're gonna get that out and then we'll spread it by hand. Just make sure it's even. And once again, if you missed it, this is garlic, chili peppers, ginger, lemon, and a little bit of salt. Now we're going to cover this up, pretty much a marinade that you cook it in. So now it's time to put it in our oven. It's at 375 degrees for 20 minutes on the middle shell. Oh man. There we go. We'll see it in 20 minutes. That looks awesome. I'm going to keep on munching down on my sashimi here and then we'll have us an awesome dinner that was swimming in the Gulf of Mexico no more than like six hours ago so see them so the timer just went off for 20 minutes i'm looking at it looks good if you're unsure you can take a fork and try to flake it if it flakes off easily it's ready but what i like to do is clear broil it on high for a couple minutes there oh they've been on broiling on high for four minutes it's time to take our fish out 
Oh man, if y'all could smell the aroma from that ginger, the garlic, from all those ingredients. Oh yeah, those are cooking great. Here we go. Heck yeah. Gonna let these cool down on the stove. Like I said, if you're unsure, you can take a fork and flake it apart, but look how white that meat is, thoroughly cooked. Gonna let it cool down some and then we'll plate it and try a bite. Hey, guess what y'all? So I have some basmati white rice right here. Very good rice, if you know, you know. And we're gonna start plating our fish. I want that piece right there. It looks so good. So we'll cut that down. Oh yeah, it's cooked perfect too. See how it flakes apart? That's what you want. We'll take that. Still steaming up good. Lay some down. Side of our rice. I have some chopped green onions. A little sprig of cilantro. Have some of this balsamic glaze. Come on, get some of this balsamic glaze down there. Balsamic vinegar. Take our spoon. Just some presentation purposes. <laughs> and we're ready to go, y'all. Get some more of them green onions there. Well, presentation, man, that's that's what it's about. Get your mind ready to eat something delicious. So y'all, I'm gonna see out on the porch because it's always beautiful at my house, being able to eat and enjoy the water that these fish came from. So I'll see you out there. Let's go on the porch where we like to enjoy this meal here. Got a nice cold beverage. <laughs> Let me try a bite. Flakes right off, super white fish. Dip some in that glaze, a little bit of rice. Here we go. Wow. Amazing. Like that is, that's a very good fish. Very tasty fish. Cooked perfect like that. Here we go again. Mm. Okay, Rainbow Runner, if you ever catch one, I know a lot of y'all watching that fish saltwater you've tried them before but if you haven't yet it's definitely worth it spike it bleed it out take it home make you some sashimi or if you don't like raw fish bake it in the oven with some very fresh and simple ingredients it wasn't hard to clean at all that is absolutely delicious mm. now here's probably y'all saddest part but one of my favorite parts because i get to finish my dinner i have to let y'all go if you enjoy catching cooks like these, don't forget to smash that subscribe button if you're not yet. Also have some Bama Saltwater hats on BamaSaltwater.com. And y'all go check out all the partners of the channel down in the description below as well. But y'all, I'm going to finish this Rainbow Runner. Phenomenal fish. There's plenty to feed everybody when they get home from work. So I'll see you in the next Bama Saltwater fishing video. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later. Look at them bottlenose dolphin jumping pretty cool I'm about 30 miles out right now so got a little bit ways to go back home that is neat bunch of them <laughs> really cool